Hey everyone, we're back in the normal studio for at least one episode today, and we're back for a really fun one, because Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's liberals are in deep danger. And yes, they have been in deep danger for about a year now, but it's somehow gotten worse. And I've said that many times over the past several months, that somehow it does get worse for Justin Trudeau. And this is a beautiful exception to that, in which it's not just worse, it's the worst it could possibly get. This is a new poll out from Angus Reid that has the Conservative Party of Canada under the leadership of Pierre Polyev at 43%. The Liberals, 21, only 21%. The NDP is at 19, Bloc Québécois 10, Green Party 5, and PPC getting their 1% that they dream of. This is horrific. And yes, have the Liberals been around 22 points before? I think there's been another poll that had them at 21 points, but they're 22 points behind right now. The The margin be between the Liberals and the Conservatives is bigger than the share of the vote that the Liberals have. And do you know how many seats this would result in the Liberals getting? Uh, not very many, apparently. They would come in fourth place on seats, at least according to the model of Sharia Teast here, who actually has been very good at predicting the outcomes of by-elections. He tends to, at least from what I've seen with his modeling, he tends to add in the fact that based on the enthusiasm in different voting groups, the Conservatives tend to actually overperform their polls and the Liberals tend to underperform their polls. So 21% basically means that in many of these ridings around the GTA area, even the Montreal area, Vancouver, the Maritimes, the Liberals are basically winning nothing. Because the difference between getting 21% for the Liberals and getting like 25 that 4% gap is like everything in the GTA. Because the Liberals, most of their seats are won with like 42% of the vote, which isn't that much overall. A lot of conservative seats are won with like 55% of the vote. There's not that many safe liberal seats, and this is proving it. Whereas the NDP with 19 is getting far more seats because they have very concentrated support around the country. A lot of NDP seats are actually very safe seats that they win with like 60% of the vote because it's some like Winnipeg labor riding or it's some university riding. But this po polling model from Sharia Teast has the Conservatives getting 227 seats, the Bloc getting 48, making the Bloc the official opposition. The NDP gets 41 seats. They actually somehow just fumble into doing better because the Liberals are so incompetent. And then the Liberal Party of Canada gets 25 seats, and the Greens get two. <laughs> That's amazing to me. Uh, sorry, I'm a little bit sick today. But like, you know, masterful gambit, Mr. Trudeau. I don't know how he's just fumbled this hard, hard in the past year. Yes, Pierre Polyev is a very formidable opponent for Justin Trudeau. Pierre Polyev is charismatic. He's talking about the right issues. He knows how to frame the issues. He knows how to fight back against the media. But Justin Trudeau, all he keeps doing is either just basically denying anything's wrong and actually everything's fantastic, or he just labelly just photocopies whatever the DNC is doing in the United States. And so now the liberals have been kind of pushing this like Justin Trudeau is a fresh new face in politics. He's just like Kamala Harris. He's full of joy. And, you know, spoiler, Kamala Harris is not a joyful person either. But when Justin Trudeau tries to do that same strategy, but in Canada, as the man who has been in charge for nine years, it's just insulting to people. And that's what generates big moments like this, where Justin Trudeau gets absolutely dunked on by a worker at an event he's trying to do with labor over the labor uh, Labor Day long weekend. We got donuts over here if you want to, to thank you for your hard work. I, I can we, bring some for my kids here. Okay. Uh, the 25% tariffs we just brought in on Chinese skills yeah. can help you out. That's going to keep my job, yeah. That's yeah. Job. What about the 40% the the, uh, taxes I'm paying? And, and I don't have a doctor. The four hundred million dollars in the yeah. invested in the electric yeah. car yeah. means you're going to have a job. Well, I think you're only here for another year. We won't see you around probably another year. Well, that's that's what elections yeah. are for. That's right. That's right. And I, I look forward to everyone exercising the right to vote. Yep. And the basic choice: we're going to invest in you and your jobs. I don't. I don't cut? believe you for a second. Uh, dental care. Do you know anyone who got dental care? Yeah, I pay for it myself. Okay. We're like three years behind. The job and coverage. Yeah, four, uh, but we four got people seniors. in my family. Got... <laughs> okay. I don't think we need to see any more of this, but yeah, that did not go well for Justin Trudeau because 
He just doesn't know how to talk to average people anymore. And that was such a devastating clip for Trudeau. Like, not like it's going to, you know, further put him in the hole. I don't think that video has that much, you know, of an impact on election. But in terms of a week-long news cycle, that's a pretty embarrassing thing for Trudeau to have experienced. And But he doesn't know how to speak to this guy because he usually just gets the media to do it for him. And now when he's talking to this guy who's like, yeah, no, nothing's actually very good right now. And Justin Trudeau just says, dental care? Do you know anyone with dental care? And the guy's like, yeah, I pay for it for myself. More than 50% of people before the dental care program had their own private plans. And I even think before that, like an, a, another portion of people had private plans through employers. Justin Trudeau is not helping anybody. He is giving handouts to a small sliver of the population who maybe rightfully can't afford it and they maybe need some help, but he's spending everybody's money on these bloated programs that are supposed to cover everyone in the country in order to solve minor issues for a select few group of people, but he wants the credit for giving you dental care, even though you didn't get dental care from him. You got it you like from your own you know, wages from paying it into dental care. Uh, but Justin Trudeau also on the weekend was trying to do a lot of like this labor messaging. And it's really embarrassing to now see him trying to move into the NDP's turf of being like the labor party. But to be real, the new labor party is basically the conservative party because Jagmeet Singh and Justin Trudeau both are not very good at speaking to actual workers. A strong middle class doesn't happen by accident. The eight-hour workday, weekends off, safe and healthy workplaces, protections against arbitrary dismissal, good-paying, fulfilling, community-building work. Uh, I'm going to point out there, this video goes on a little bit longer. None of those things actually build a strong middle class. All those were benefits. Those were perks. And uh, unions have myth-made themselves into thinking that they're the ones who created the eight-hour workweek. They didn't workplaces that were competing for better employees gave better benefits out and that's how that happened yes unions had a small part to play in it i suppose it's very over hyped how much unions have done in the past on these issues uh, in general a lot of like you know bad labor standards actually back in the day were due to government giving specific corporations monopolies that had nothing to do with capitals and was mostly about corporatism you know state and private business power basically taking over a market in favor of a few and blocking out all competition. But yeah, all this stuff is not actually how you build a strong middle class because Justin Trudeau doesn't know how to build a strong middle class. He, he just thinks that somehow the government passes policies that say we built a strong middle class and that's how you get it done. Not by allowing people to actually go and sell their labor to somebody for the highest price or in being able for people to buy labor, for people to buy products and all this stuff and be able to develop new natural resource projects. No, no, no. It's the government being involved because Canada is a country where now more than 50% of the GDP is public spending. Uh, especially when you consider that a lot of our private spending is technically just contracted public or uh, private corporations, but still working for the government. So it's still government money going around paying for all this stuff. Uh, but maybe to end off today, I just want to jump over to something that I felt was very telling about Jagmeet Singh, if I can find this one. Jagmeet Singh posted this video promoting unions uh, the other day, talking about how like we all need to like, to stand up to politicians like Pierre Paul who want to crush workers. And it's very telling that in this video that Jagmeet Singh posts, not to be rude to anybody, I'm going to turn off the volume just because there is some, I believe, some music later on. But they're like doing the stuff about Pierre Paul being a nasty man who hates workers. And Jagmeet Singh's the real man who's standing up for workers. And the whole video is just him talking to these two women from very corporate labor boards. Jagmeet Singh is not a worker, working class politician. And this is what is killing him with union members when he's fighting against Pure Poly. More you working class union members are voting for Pure Poly because he respects them and because he doesn't treat them like they're five years old. Jagmeet Singh has just videos of him hanging out with the most white collar union members you've ever seen. People who work desk jobs, people who don't work at steel plants or, you know, auto manufacturing plants or any of this stuff. People who don't work in the oil and gas sectors, resource sectors, logging. Jagmeet Singh doesn't like those people because they're icky and they work tough jobs and he wants people who go for pedicures. That's the Jagmeet Singh crowd. And somehow, to go back to the start, somehow Jagmeet Singh is still getting far more seats than Justin Trudeau. 
Uh, maybe we can even investigate this map a little bit more before I end this off. But look at that Greater Toronto Area map. That look at look how little there is for the Liberals. There's three seats for the Liberals. There are three seats for the Liberals in the Greater Toronto Area. Where is where is Montreal? This is the only somewhat bright spot for the Liberals. A little bit of some soft Liberal seats around the Montreal area. There's a Conservative seat, and then the blocks start moving into town a bit more. Ottawa Gatineau, the Liberals hold on to one seat. Kingston would actually flip NDP. Mark Gerritsen would rightfully lose his seat. And the Greater Vancouver area, again, you get one, two, three, four, five, six seats or whatever. It, it's pathetic. It's pathetic. And it's because Justin Trudeau has been playing on political easy mode for the past seven years, running against weak conservative leaders, running with the media, trying to like push him into power, despite the fact that people don't like his policies. And now that the media no longer is effective anymore and the conservatives have a good leader, he's just dead in the water. And him trying to just spin out the same old tricks about how actually Canada's on the rise. Don't you see that some of the top 10 uh, places to live in the world are in Canada? All this stuff is not, it's insulting to people. When the economy sucks and when he's the problem, you can't have you talk your way through it. It just infuriates people. But anyways, that should be it for me today, guys. If you want to donate to the legal fund for the National Telegraph, it really helps to support the show. I have the Give, Send, Go link for that in the description of this video. We have a Chinese billionaire suing us and it's cost me more than $32,000 defending ourselves in court. And so contributing anything to that helps us keep fighting back so we don't have to give out fake apologies and capitulate to actual political bullies like this guy is. So yeah, that would really help me out. And then if you live in BC, I'm just going to plug the fact please donate to the BC Conservative Party. The only way that David Eby can stay in power is if he has a way better funded campaign than the Conservatives. And even if people don't like him, his volunteers are the ones getting to the doors. His people are the ones calling up BC residents, getting them to go vote NDP. The BC Conservatives need some money so that they can get their volunteers out, so they can get messages out, so that they can run ads. All the financing rules in BC are slanted towards incumbent parties like the NDP, and the Conservatives as a complete upstart is at a severe disadvantage. So if you live in BC, go and donate in your riding or in the one I've linked in the description below, Abbotsford South. Donate at least $100. doesn't matter really what EDA you donate to because we're going to be redistributing money into the different areas where the Conservatives have a good chance of winning. So that's where I'll probably leave you guys off. I might not be making another video in the studio because I'll probably be back in Abbotsford later today. I have a big road trip. So, you know, wish me luck, I suppose. But I'll see you guys next time, regardless of where that's at.